Welcome. This is a continuation of the last video regarding the basics of organic chemistry. Well, actually, we have a lot of videos discussing the so-called basics, but I started with the atoms that we will encounter the most, including carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, and the halogens. Now, disclaimer, we would actually encounter other molecules like magnesium, phosphorus, so forth, but since we will not encounter them as heavily as the ones we have here on this uh, slide, then let me just introduce you to those atoms and their importance as we pass through them in the next topics. For now, I want to build up on this discussion because uh, the good thing with this slide right here is that we already saw a lot of our general chemistry coming back to us. And in case you didn't study it very well, we could say it's haunting you right now. But you have to face the reality that these are the foundations of our next topics, such as the octet rule, our quantum numbers, electron configurations, the valence electrons, so on and so forth. And I want to build up from that. Now, when we are asked to write chemical formulas, and that's really what I want to focus on this recording, we are just asked to write the letters and the numbers, right? Like they say, write sodium chloride, that's N-A-C-L. Or they, they say, or you are asked in the exam, write acetic acid, and that's easy, it's C-H-3-C-O-O-H, all right? But this time, this will not just solve everything because in organic chemistry, more than the elements that we talk about, it's also important to know the arrangement of the bonds around the molecule, around the atoms consisting the molecule. So instead of just using the word chemical formula, which is what we are writing so far in NaCl and CH3COOH, let's replace the word chemical with the word structural. And when you say structural formula, that's also a chemical formula, but this time displaying a more accurate arrangement of bonds. So for example, the structural formula of CH3COOH goes like this. CH3COOH. And by looking at this, you will actually see some details that you have never seen in the letters only like oh now you realize there's actually a double bonded oxygen and a single bonded oxygen and we would actually not know that if we don't know the structural formula and that is what we want to know in this time i will show you the three common types of structural formulas that we will face along the way the first one is the one you are very much acquainted to we will have the Kekulé or the expanded formula. And actually, this is an example of a Kekulé formula, which is called expanded simply because all the bonds are written. Now, it's called expanded because the structure or the drawing becomes a large one, which is a little time-consuming to do also. So, let me start off with the expanded structure of a particular molecule. So, we can... Uh, have this one for our example right now. The name of this one is propene. Now, don't worry about the name. If you ask, how do I name that? I will dedicate a separate discussion for the basics of naming organic compounds. But anyway, who cares? At the moment, let's just say that this is the structure of propene. First, you may ask this, like, how? What, what's going on? Like, carbons and hydrogens are everywhere. And in organic chemistry, that is the case. Normally, if I have a carbon, the things that surround it are hydrogens, unless there are other atoms like oxygen or nitrogen. Now, after that, the next question is usually, okay, so I know that carbon is bonded to hydrogens. Uh, how do I know how many hydrogens we would have? And to answer that, let's go back to this magic, magic number. Carbon has four bonds, and that should be consistent all the way. So this carbon should have four bonds. So as you can see, it has one, two, three, four bonds. How about this carbon? It will also have one, two, three, four bonds. Notice that this bond right here is shared by this carbon and this carbon. That's why we count this bond for the carbon right here. But we also count this bond for the carbon right here. Okay? Now for this carbon, 
it also shares its double bond so these two bonds are the property of the carbon at the right so one two three four so now knowing that all my bonds or all my carbons have four bonds then we know that we have the right number of hydrogens let me just rewrite it so it wouldn't be as messy now the next type of formula is condensed in the condensed version from the word condensed we want the structure to be a little more compact and in doing so we are actually skipping the drawing of the single bonds so in other words let me use a different color if i have this single bond right here single bond single bond i'm not going to draw any of those so i will convert all of these h's to just this symbol ch3 so this is just ch3 in the condensed version now this is also a single bond so i will not write this also i will just write the next carbon which is this and then this carbon has a single bond with this h so that's also not going to be written i will just write the letter however usually in the condensed version we still write the double and triple bonds for carbon by the way carbon usually has a maximum of three bonds never four or five so we write the double bond and then we have here this carbon and this carbon has two hydrogens so i will write that as h2 so there you go this is the uh, condensed version for the same molecule propene and then the third one is called the skeletal formula and for most part this is what i prefer to use because it saves a lot of time so for propene we have this drawing and this time you can legitimately say draw the structure because you don't even see any letters here and how do we interpret that first since we're, our focus is on carbons so let's uh, let's ask the question where are the carbons and the answer is very simple you may actually already know uh, how to interpret this at the moment since in the skeletal structure here we have how many points one two three those represent these three carbons so we can actually uh, label them just for clarity one two three and let this be one two three and then let's see this carbon number one is single bonded to carbon number two which is what you're seeing right here but carbon number two and carbon number three are double bonded so this carbon number two and number three are double bonded now the next question is where are the hydrogens and that is the case for its skeletal structures the hydrogens are not drawn they are hidden and in order to guide you in answering the question how many hydrogens should we we have then we go back to the idea that carbon has four bonds so if you know if let's say this carbon one you only see one bond for this carbon meaning there should be three other bonds in order to make it four where are those three bonds then assume that those are hydrogens that we don't see but they are there okay so just because they are hidden doesn't mean that they don't exist so for number two let's let's try to do the same thing so two has how many bonds are visible one two three so there are three visible bonds so there should be one bond that's hiding and therefore that means two has one hiding hydrogen and then for three how many bonds does it have that are visible well this one one and then this one also so two there are two bonds that are visible for three and therefore in order to be four there must be two hiding bonds which are hydrogens and to double check carbon number one has three hydrogens check carbon number two has only one h check and then carbon number three this one has two hydrogens check and i really suggest that you get the hang of our Kekule and condensed structures because these are the most common ways that we will draw compounds we will not do the expanded for most part because it is too much uh, to draw it's time consuming now just for practice we have here the expanded form and you can pause this one and try to see how to draw this there's actually a new concept that i have not taught yet but uh, i will uh, introduce that very shortly 
okay so i assume that you pause if you didn't then that means you already want to know the answer so let's do that so first the condensed version let's have this carbon which has one two three hydrogen so that's ch3 and then the next carbon has only one h and now your question may be uh wait this carbon is attached to two carbons and then what do i do now what you can do is this for the carbon at the bottom which you can condense that as ch3 you can put that in a parenthesis and usually if you put something in a parenthesis you assume that this thing right here is attached to the carbon beside it and that's true right because the ch3 is really connected to this carbon just the way that this thing is connected to this thing let me clear that up a bit okay next we move forward so uh i haven't done this yet so that's the next thing i will draw and then there's a triple bond to this carbon and you should draw the triple bond because the only thing you should not draw in the condensed is the single and then we have our next carbon and that carbon has three h's so this is the condensed version of the structure we have up here and then for skeletal let's see how many carbons do we have in the straight chain we have one two three four five note that i'm not counting this because this is outside the straight chain so i need five points right one two three four five and then between three and four there is a triple bond so one two three four so between three and four there should be a triple bond now let me make that a little more organized now actually there's something wrong about the way that we draw the triple bond but you will realize that in the next videos but let let's just say that this is correct for the moment and then at number two number two has the ch3 so i can just you know write a point here to say that this is a ch3 attached to this carbon which is number two and therefore this is the skeletal formula of this expanded formula okay now if you think that there's something inconsistent about here which by the way there's nothing inconsistent I'm sure that these are the correct answers then you can try to recheck the details of the initial expanded formula and then you have to convince yourself that yes this is really the correct condensed and this is the correct skeletal formula for the expanded structure above so with that I stop here and then we proceed to the next lesson on the next recording.